Welcome to Annotating IFR Charts. I'm Bruce Williams, a flight instructor based in Seattle. You can find more information about me at my website, blog, and YouTube channel. This presentation shows how you can use annotations to highlight important information on electronic charts. Here's a chart for a typical instrument approach. The ILS or localizer runway 17 at Tacoma, Washington, KTIW. It's certainly usable as is, but you can make setting up for, briefing, and flying such an approach much easier and less stressful if you mark up the chart. Annotations can do more than highlight important altitudes and headings. For example, IFR students and instrument instructors may find it helpful to add procedural notes to charts. These departure and approach charts include target power settings and configurations, and reminders for setting common nav frequencies and PFD bearing pointers. Annotating charts also helps address a modern problem. EFBs have eliminated the hassle of updating paper charts and related documents. Today, it's easy to go through many update cycles without really looking at the charts you use regularly, to say nothing about procedures you fly only occasionally. Marking up electronic pages helps you slow down and review the details on charts. Annotating on the ground reduces heads down time and confusion in flight, especially for trips outside your normal operating area. This presentation shows off the annotation feature in ForeFlight. You can use several tools in ForeFlight to highlight and add information to charts and documents. To learn more about annotations in the app, watch the video tutorials at the ForeFlight website and review the pilot's guide. Garmin Pilot and other EFB apps include similar annotation features. For example, here's the annotation feature in Garmin Pilot. It doesn't include as many markup tools as ForeFlight does, but the overall utility is the same. And FlyQ from Seattle Avionics offers a similar set of freehand writing tools. Using a stylus makes annotating charts much easier. You can use an Apple Pencil with an iPad, but several less expensive options are available. You can read about some of the choices at my blog. Please keep in mind that the examples presented here use FAA charts and show many possible uses for annotations. The markups may be too elaborate for your taste or needs, especially on charts that you use frequently, or if you use Jeppesen charts, which present information differently. You may want to use annotations sparingly, highlighting only a few key items. For example, you can use green boxes to highlight the chart title and the localizer frequency for an ILS approach, and add a green arrow to remind you that this is a green needles procedure, and to confirm that the CDI is set properly as you join the final approach course. An IFR student may find it helpful to include reminders of the numbers, power and flap settings to use while flying the final approach segment. Or you might add a reminder to announce your position on the CTAF, and to activate pilot-controlled lighting at a non-towered airport. The general idea is that annotating charts calls out important information and tasks without making you turn to other references during high workload phases of flight. The annotations that you add to charts depend on several factors, including your general experience flying IFR, your familiarity with the airplane and avionics, your familiarity with the procedure being flown, hidden notes or NOTAMs, such as a change to a DA or MDA, that may lurk on a chart. Other operational factors, for example, remembering to activate pilot control lighting or make position reports on the CTAF. For example, I use yellow boxes to mark circling minimums on charts used in the training environment. In the real world, I rarely fly a circling approach. There's almost always a straight-in approach available, or the weather will be good enough to cancel IFR and land under VFR. There's no need to clutter most charts with colors that highlight circle-to-land information. Still, a full markup is a useful exercise to help IFR pilots develop good situational awareness and habits. Annotating charts makes you slow down, review charts carefully, and consider how you'll set up avionics and the airplane for procedures, whether they depict a departure, an arrival, or an approach. So if you're training for the instrument rating, using new avionics, or flying to unfamiliar airports, Consider how you can use these suggestions to make important details stand out on IFR charts. And remember that the markups shown here are not intended to make you stress about your next color vision test at the AME's office. Now let's put annotations to work, from pre-flight planning and departure procedures through approaches. 
we'll look at specific examples that show how you can use annotations to best suit your needs. Let's begin with pre-flight planning. Here's the chart supplement listing for Auburn, California, Kilo Alpha Uniform November. Simple annotations make it easier to find the airport heading among the dense text. The yellow highlights I've added draw attention to a noise abatement procedure for runway 25 and to the ATC phone number to call for an IFR clearance or to cancel IFR on the ground. You can use text annotations to transfer these details to the airport diagram, making them readily available on the chart that you use before takeoff or landing. Blue rectangles mark the run-up areas. These annotations on the diagram for the Efreda Washington Airport are reminders that runway 422 is reserved for gliders and that runway 3 uses right traffic. This markup of the airport diagram for Boeing Field in Seattle highlights a section of Taxiway Bravo closed by NOTAM, and it shows open taxi routes in green. A blue box marks the location of the flight school where I instruct. And I added the frequency for the on-airport BOR test facility. Here's an example of how you might annotate a chart for a departure procedure. The Watsonville 4 departure procedure is based on the Salinas VOR. Note that you fly different tracks to Salinas depending on which runway you use for takeoff. If you depart runway 20, the procedure calls for a climb on a 213 heading until you reach at least 1,000 feet. Then you turn and intercept the Salinas 293 radial, inbound course 113, to the VOR. If you depart runway 2 or 9, the procedure calls for a climbing right turn to fly heading 175 until you intercept the Salinas 309 radial and track it inbound to the VOR. Using different colors to highlight the different routes makes the tracks easier to distinguish on the chart. You can also annotate a chart for a procedure like the Garlic 1 at Watsonville. This RNAV departure includes several transitions depending on your route of flight. In this case, a takeoff from runway 20 to Garlic, and then via the Salinas transition to join an airway northeast. Marking your route on the chart makes it easier to distinguish the fixes and turn points in your clearance, especially during the busy after takeoff phase of flight. Adding the frequency for the Salinas VOR reminds you to verify that it's tuned and identified for reference, even on this RNAV procedure. Here's another example the Brute 7 SID at Medford, Oregon. It's a complex departure, with a wall of text on a second page that describes the various transitions. Marking up the chart makes it much easier to set up, brief, and fly the specific route in your clearance. As I'll explain in more detail later, using a consistent color scheme helps you confirm the avionics and PFD setup. Here, red boxes call attention to important notes. Green highlights ground-based nav aids that you can use for situational awareness even when you use GPS for primary guidance. Blue shows a heading leg, and magenta designates fixes and tracks that you'll identify and fly with GPS. You can also use annotations on en route charts. For example, here's a crossing restriction that ATC issued at Bander Intersection. At the other end of a flight, annotations are useful if you're cleared to fly a star an IFR arrival such as the Maddie 4 into Bellingham, Washington. This arrival includes two tracks depending on whether runway 16 or runway 34 is in use. Different colors make the separate tracks stand out on the chart and the color coding links the different flight paths to the descriptions below the plan view. On this RNAV procedure I've again added nav aid frequencies in green to enhance situational awareness. Now let's move on to approaches. When you fly procedures with unusual elements, annotations reduce workload and confusion during critical phases of flight. This approach at Yakima, Washington is challenging for a couple of reasons. First, it's a back course. Second, it requires a descent angle of 5.9 degrees, twice the typical gradient. That information is easy to overlook in the busy profile view. The process of annotating the chart calls attention to this important detail and prompts more research. Adding a text annotation to the plan view is a reminder about the steep approach. You can look up the required rate of descent in the Climb Descent table in the TPP and then transfer the information directly to the chart. I use 90 knots ground speed, typical for an airplane like a Cessna 172, which to meet this gradient requires a descent rate of 960 feet per minute. 
we've explored the value of annotations. Now let's look at a specific color coding system for marking up charts. Here's the ILS or Localizer Runway 22 approach at Sheboygan, Wisconsin. It's a typical ILS. I draw green boxes around the procedure title and the primary frequency to remind me that this is a green needles procedure that requires me to tune and identify the nav aid that provides guidance along the final approach course. Next, I add a green arrow along the final approach course. That highlight is a reminder to confirm that the CDI is set to the correct navigation source before I join the localizer. Another green box around the Oshkosh VOR frequency calls out the role that nav aid plays, both as the beginning of a feeder route and as a cross radial to identify the final approach fix. The box is a reminder to tune that VOR in the NAV2 receiver. What if you miss the approach? Here I've used a blue arrow to mark a heading leg, the initial turn to intercept a radial from the Oshkosh VOR. And because I will use GPS guidance to fly the missed approach procedure, a magenta arrow shows the track along that radial to the holding pattern, also highlighted in magenta. I also use annotations to highlight key information in the profile view. For example, a red box surrounds the final approach fix to call out the fix name and crossing altitude. Another red box highlights the straight-in minimums, a decision altitude of 943 feet and one half mile visibility. In my color scheme, a blue box denotes the localizer-only MDA for categories A and B. Another blue box reminds me to brief the visual descent point, which is associated with the straight-in MDA for the localizer-only approach. A yellow box highlights the circling MDA, again only for categories A and B. And blue arrows are reminders of left traffic for other runways if you circle. Here's the complete markup of the profile view. Note the magenta box that surrounds the missed approach section. It's another reminder that although this is a Green Needles ILS, I'll fly the entire missed approach using GPS guidance. Now here's what the chart looks like with a full set of annotations, including a couple of reminder notes to set the approach configuration, turn on pilot controlled lighting, and make a call on the CTAF. Again, this level of detail may be more than you want or need, but for IFR students or pilots who are flying with a panel full of new avionics, a scheme like this can be useful in a pre-flight briefing, and it provides helpful reminders all in one place, the chart in front of you. This chart shows another example of how color-coded annotations can help you fly a procedure when you'll rely on ground-based nav aids for guidance along an ILS final approach course, but use GPS to fly other segments, such as DME arcs and the missed approach. Magenta highlights show where you can use GPS for guidance. Green reminds you to confirm that the CDI needle is set to the correct nav aid for the final approach segment. Here's the same color coding system used to annotate an RNAV approach that includes terminal arrival areas. The procedure title and RNAV base tracks are marked in magenta. Key fixes, minimums, and other information get color coded highlights as described earlier. By the way, ForeFlight includes a sticky note feature with additional symbols that you can also use to annotate charts. They can be reminders for a variety of tasks or include pop-up text that might otherwise clutter a chart. You've seen the results of a chart markup. Now watch a short clip to observe how some of the annotation tools work in ForeFlight. The annotation toolbox includes rectangles, lines and arrows, text boxes, and other shapes that you can draw on or add to a chart. After you insert an element, you can copy it, resize it, change its color and other characteristics, and move it into position on the chart.
can also copy annotations between charts. With a little practice, you can quickly annotate to suit your preferences. ForeFlight saves annotations until a procedure is amended or renamed. To learn more about using the annotation tool in ForeFlight, visit ForeFlight's YouTube channel. To experiment with annotations, practice using annotated charts in an aviation training device or with the Garmin PC Trainer Suite. It's a free simulation available for Windows computers. The simulation shows off the latest Garmin avionics, but the logic the units use is common to all Garmin navigators starting with the GNS series. The PFD and maps also follow the presentations used in Garmin G5, G500, and G1000 displays. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit my website, blog, and YouTube channel.